Good afternoon, class. You know, just imagining that you're saying that all together kind of gives me just a teeny bit of the usual feeling I get. Anyway, hello, friends. It's me again. Um, I was just thinking, I haven't said it in a little while, but I am so sad that we can't be together right now. I really, really miss you. Um, I'm sure you miss being together um, at school in the classroom with me too. Um, I get a chance to go in tomorrow morning to get some stuff that I might use in these little videos or something. So um, I'll take a little bit of a picture and maybe even a video tomorrow while I'm there so you can see what it looks like when it's empty. You didn't really believe me before when I said it's like a haunted house at a school and there's no kids. You'll see. <laughs> I'll do my best to show you. Anyway, um, let's have chapter whatever's next. Chapter four of our April adventure. Last time we left the gang, they were still in the park. They were looking for all those eggs. And they found a bunch more. There was a little fun playhouse thing. And they also were getting chased by bees at the very end. Super scary. This was the picture, super scary bees coming after him. So let's have it. Chapter four, what's in Mr. Pocket's pocket? Oh, by the way, uh, I'm having to share the studio. I wanted to explain why the video's uh, later this afternoon than usual. Mr. Munoz was in here earlier when I woke up. So um, he was using the studio. He doesn't always sit in front of the trolls. Um, he sits somewhere else because his meetings are a little bit more serious than mine. But um, anyway, that's that. Chapter four, what's in Mr. Pocket's pocket? What happened, Bradley asked. Brian poked a bee's nest, Nate yelled. He and Brian flopped on the ground out of breath. Did you get stung, Lucy asked. No, we ran too fast, Brian said. Did you find any eggs, Bradley asked. Nate grinned. Yeah, we found two on the baseball field, he said. He and Brian each pulled a plastic egg from their pockets. They were on the pitcher's mound and home plate. And they had candy kisses inside, Brian said, rubbing his belly. So we've got ten eggs so far, Lucy said, but we haven't found a real egg yet. Nate and Brian put their eggs into the basket with the others. Where haven't we looked, Bradley asked. Hmm, how about over there, Lucy asked. Not far from the playhouse were some wooden farm animals. There were ducks and chickens, cows, sheep, goats, and ponies. The animals had been painted to look real. The four kids ran over to the make-believe farm. They looked behind the wooden animals and in the grass where they stood. Nothing, Brian said. Wait, I see something, Bradley yelled. He looked inside a goat's mouth and there was a plastic egg. This is number 11. Bradley found a cookie inside the egg and ate it. Ah, can you imagine just eating a cookie you find? Here's the picture. I thought I made a mistake when I said it's in a goat's mouth, but then I remembered they were goat statues. It's super silly. Lucy soon found another egg. It was under the hen in its make-believe nest. Inside was a tiny plastic mirror. The kids put the eggs in Lucy's basket. We, all, we have all 12 plastic eggs, she said, but we still don't have the real ones. I don't know where else to look, Bradley said. Maybe the eggs hatched, Nate said, and the little chickens ran away. Talking about eggs is making me hungry, Brian said. Let's go home and eat breakfast. The kids hiked up Eagle Lane toward Bradley and Brian's house. The sun over the trees made them squint their eyes. They, clump, they clumped up the back steps and walked into the kitchen. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose were there making breakfast. A bowl of pancake batter sat on the counter. Pal sat near Josh's feet, watching him. Pancakes! Yum, yum, Brian said. I'm starving. Josh put his finger to his lips. Shh! Mom and Dad are still sleeping, he said. The four kids pulled off their sneakers as quietly as they could. Where have you guys been, Josh went on. He looked upset. Searching for these, Lucy said. She set the egg basket on the table. Plastic eggs, Dink asked. Where'd you get those? You know we found you know where we found them because you hid them, Nate said. You left notes on our pillows. Notes on your pillows, Ruth Rose asked. What do you mean? Inside plastic eggs, Lucy added. Why would we do that? Josh asked. Because you three are the shadow, Bradley cried. He pulled out his note. This is printed off your computer, Josh. Josh laughed. Okay, we're busted, he said. We did it. So how many eggs did you find? All of them, Nate said. 
Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose looked in the basket. I only count 12, Dink said. Well, we couldn't find the four real ones, Lucy said. Do we still get the treasure? Brian asked. No way, Josh said. Wash your hands and let's eat. The four younger kids washed up, then pulled chairs to the table. Soon all seven were gobbling up pancakes and drinking juice. So where did you hide the real eggs, Bradley asked. Should we tell them, Josh asked Dink and Ruth Rose. The other two nodded. You know that sign telling people not to feed the swans, Josh asked. The four younger kids nodded. Well, the real eggs were on the ground next to the sign, Dink said. You didn't see them? Nope, Bradley said, and I would have because I'm standing right next to the sign. That's funny, Dink said. I put them in the grass by the sign. Maybe somebody stole them, Brian said. Ruth Rose grinned. The mystery of the green lawn egg thief, she said. How exciting, <laughs> Josh cracked. Anyone want any extra syrup, Dink asked. There was someone else in the park, Lucy said. That man with the little dog. Yeah, Mr. Pocket, Nate said. I saw him pick up something. I don't think he'd steal Easter eggs from kids, though, Bradley said. But maybe he just saw the eggs and picked them up, Brian said. What did they look like, Josh? We hard-boiled them, then painted them gold, Josh said. The seven kids looked at each other. Golden eggs, Lucy said. Anybody would grab one. Hurry up, Bradley said. I know where Mr. Pocket lives. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my gosh. Getting more exciting. I like this. We've got a few more chapters to go. Um, I did not forget my usual routine of the guinea pig. But before I show the guinea pig, um, I also just want to say we're going to be back together again soon. Uh, that's the, one of the things that uh, cheers me up when I feel really sad about not being together. No matter how long it takes, we will be together again. You know, and I think about that and what a happy day that's going to be. Um, maybe that'll be something that can cheer you up too. One of these days, it will be safe again for me to give you a hug and for us to share fun times and laughs and be together again. So I like to think about that. All right, now for the cherry on top is our special guest, Piggy. Give me one quick second. It's your turn, Piggy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, somebody's camera shy. It's Thor again. He's kind of a crowd pleaser, so I thought he was a good one for today. Look at that crazy, crazy pig. Here's his bottom hairs that I have to do a butt cut on sometimes. Doop, doop. Gets, he gets stuck. Ooh, he's really bad at me. <laughs> Look at his face. Hi, everybody. Oh, my stars. Well, I will see you again tomorrow. I hope you have a fun day, and I can't wait till we can be together again. Let's think about that for now, huh? Bye.